According to Kren, the license awarded to City of Windhoek allows for the provision of comprehensive telecommunication services, including the construction and maintenance of network facilities, mobile or fixed line telephony services, and is valid for 15 years. Charles Fusser, who represented Paratus, argued that Section 30 of the Local Authorities Act does not give powers to the City of Windhoek to be a license holder of a class comprehensive telecommunication service license. I invite you to consider Section 30 of the Local Authorities Act. I invite you to consider it carefully and come up with any conclusion that uh, the city of Windhoek is entitled to run and to commercialize a fiber optic uh, network. There is just no power, there's just no authority. The city of Windhoek has specific powers, water reclamation, uh, roads, electricity, uh, cemeteries. It's specifically defined. It's specifically confined to the act. If the city of Windhoek wants to operate a fiber infrastructure, it must amend the act. Because if the act is not amended, it has no power to commercialize a fiber optic network. Whatever the city can do or can't do is specifically prescribed and contained in its act. MTC posed an argument saying that the city of Windhoek has authority over vast municipal land rights and due to its position as a local authority, the city of Windhoek as a license holder of a telecommunications service license could potentially create a conflict of interest for other telecommunications operators in terms of infrastructure sharing and development. The license awarded to the council allows it to enter the telecommunications fiber market and participate therein, which isn't really an issue just level the playing field. Um, the council as a local authority will enjoy preference to land rights and, the holder of, and is the holder of vast pieces of land all across Windhoek. The council will enjoy the dominant position in land ownership and infrastructure development. The awarded license without conditions or amendments to ensure compliance to section 34 gives it that added advantage. And then the other industry players, and I'm not just speaking for MTC, all of us will be prejudiced by the award of this license. The city of Windhoek was represented by Tabang Clement Patella, who argued that the city needs a class comprehensive telecommunication service license if it wants to fully achieve the objectives of its smart city project, which is aimed at bridging the digital divide by providing accessible and affordable telecommunication services to its residents. We know, as my client is saying in these papers, that it is important that those that are at the tail end of the economic chain should also be able to access these services. Look at the commercial and current licenses, and I'm saying this without necessarily criticizing them. I'm saying this to indicate that we can all complement each other. Look at the digging of the fiber optic network. You will find it in all luxurious, commercially profitable areas around our beautiful city and municipality. Ludwigsdorf, Luxury Hill, Ventuk City Centre, Finkelstein. But none of them make provisions for those commercially unattractive areas and I don't want to name them by name for the fear of being sounding disrespectful to those communities. These are communities that are targeted by our client. We have to change and accept that we can all complement each other. The city of Windhoek has also been hit with allegations of corruption where according to Al Jazeera, a city councillor in Namibia's capital has alleged she was offered a bribe by a local politician to ensure that a Chinese tech giant, Huawei, would win an exclusive contract to build a 5G telecommunication network in Windhoek.